So I'm going to give you a kind of a quick evolution of the bottom bracket in the bicycle industry. Okay. So what started out was the traditional old school little cup bearing such as this. Again, what, what did we call these? Loose ball bearing, right? Okay. They went in these little metal cups and they connected onto a crank like this, which what we call a one piece crank. Okay. One piece cranks, just for a little tidbit, use half inch pedals. Everything else that's three piece cranks use a nine sixteenths pedal. Okay. So this is an old school bike, right? This has this really big cup in it. The reason, does anybody know why that reason or the reason they had that big huge cup? The reason it is, is in order to get this big crank through there, they had to have a big cup so that it would go through it. You can't have a little skinny one, otherwise it won't go through. So that's where this big bottom bracket came from. Then they came up with a little spindle that would fit into these little threaded cu cups and stick out. This is where the evolution of the three-piece crank came from. So they went with this one and then it used what they call a square taper, which is what this little one was. And that's what this is here. And that would slide on and press onto the, to the spindle. Um, when they went to that, then they realized, wow, we could make little cartridge bottom brackets that would thread into the bottom bracket. Now it went to a little bit smaller bottom bracket, got a little stiffer, and these used a cartridge bearing, not a loose ball bearing. So which, again, people would confuse with sealed bearing versus not sealed bearing. So that's a cartridge bearing, again, square taper, using the same cranks like this. Um, from there, they realized that, hey, we can make the spindle a little bigger and hollow and lighten it up. And so they went with a splined system rather than the square taper. Okay, And again, this is still what they would consider a cartridge bottom bracket. So this crank right here has the splines in here and they would match up and go on to the crank like that. Um, the problem that they encountered with this cartridge bottom bracket like this with these spindles that are real hollow and bigger was they had to reduce the size of the bearing in order to get that in there. So what they found was over time these would wear out very, very quickly. And so it wasn't necessarily a fantastic design. So they went to what they called an external cup bearing. So again, these threaded in just like this cartridge did, but now the bearing was on the outside of the frame and they could now increase the size of the bearing and make it larger. And so that increased the stiffness and the wear on the bearings. And then they went to what they call an integrated spindle, which is like this. And so it's, it's now actually fused into or pressed into the, the crank arm. You'll see two different types. You see it like this is pressed in on the non-drive side and this one is pressed in on the drive side. Does anybody know why they did that? The reason that they did it was they originally pressed it in on here and they had a box this big in order to get it to fit in there. But by putting it on this side, they now can put the cranks into a little tiny box because it's not connected to the chain rings. That's really the only reason they did it. Yeah, that's pretty recent. And so it's now much easier to ship smaller package, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, so from this style, they went to what they call a BB30, which now went to a 30 millimeter spindle. This one here is 24 millimeters. So going to a BB30, they now enlarged it, stiffened it, and again, lightened it up. They could make it out of alloy instead of out of a steel. So it lightened everything up. These just run bearings that drop into the frame. So much like the headsets where you have a drop in, this just would drop into the frame. Um, and it was two-sided like this. Then they, again, 
figured out that they could fuse it or bond it and make it an actual fixed piece and stiffen it up. Um, so from the BB-30 became, the disadvantage was that one is it had a tendency to creak because it was just dropped in the frame. So what they came up with was the press fit 30 instead of the BB-30. So the press fit 30 now presses into the frame and actually has the cups and the bearings in there so that it re removes that creaking sound and noise. Um, that's basically the evolution of what the bottom bracket came to. Now there are adapters and all kinds of things that you can fit one style crank to the other and I don't even want to try to get into that right now because there's a lot of different options. This is one right here that would press into a BB30 bottom bracket but would allow you to run this type of cartridge bottom bracket in it. So if a guy has a pair of cranks like this that he had for a while but he bought a bike that has a BB30 frame, he can buy one of these, press it in and use his existing bottom bracket or his ex existing cranks. But that's kind of in a nutshell of how it's evolved. It's very, very, there's so many different options of, of cranks and fitments that it's very confusing. But any questions that anybody has on, on bottom brackets? What about the interchangeability between brands? So be, between brands, there's really, they don't recommend it. So there's Shimano has their, um, oh, Holotech, yeah, and then you've got GXP from SRAM and you have Mega XO from FSA. Those are all 24 millimeter spindle like this, but the interface to their bottom bracket can be a little bit different. So it's always best if you buy a GXP to buy a GXP bottom bracket. It's, that's just the best way to do it. BB30 cranks are pretty universal. Um, but there are different little spacers and stuff like that to, to space them out a little bit different. And again, there's different versions of BB30 now, which makes it even more complicated, different so lengths. Some of the OEM ones come with like tons of little spacers just to fit different Yeah, to, to fit different ones. Some of them don't. Some of them come just specific to that BB30 frame. Some of them will have a bunch of spacers. There's also what they call BB386 Evo, which is actually a wide BB30 that will actually fit into a BB86 style. This, this bottom bracket is 68 millimeter. That's the most common shell. There's 68 and 73, but 68 is probably the most common shell. When they went to this, the distance in between here is the 68 millimeters, but when you add this bearings on the outside, it became 86 millimeters wide. Now they have BB86 bottom brackets, which I didn't even bring up here, which is just a press-in version of this. And so they just press in the bearings, and now it's 86 millimeters wide. A 386 Evo is a BB30 crank spindle that's designed to fit into a BB86 bottom bracket. And so that's where they, they named it the 386 Evo. So. No. So when, as a customer service person, we have to say, no, as a customer service person, when they say, does this bottom bracket fit my bike, we have to find out, okay, is your bottom bracket threaded or is it not threaded? Is it open? Does it say BB30? Does it say press fit? You know, very few of them. Sometimes they might have something on the chain stays. The other thing too with these is, uh, I didn't mention, there are different threads. So English is the most common, but there's an Italian thread, one which is a little different. So... Um, anything else? Okay. After headsets, bottom bracket for the next Yeah. And, and as far as, um, you know, trying to figure out a person's bicycle, that's the two hardest parts of the bike is trying to figure out what bottom bracket they have and what headset they have because they've just, it used to be so standardized and now it's just all over the place. And, and they'll probably come up with something new now. So. Yeah, <laughs> rear, rear shocks, dudes. So, all right.